Real Estate Investing Success Austin is proudly sponsored by Longhorn Investments. Found a new deal? Don't lose that new deal to another investor. Get fast, professional, streamlined lending with Longhorn Investments. Learn the secret to fast acquisition capital now at unitedstatesrealestateinvestor.com slash longhorn. That's unitedstatesrealestateinvestor.com slash longhorn. Choose the superior lending experience. Longhorn Investments. Hard money lending simplified. Universe. Media. Network. 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 This is Real Estate Investing Success Austin, the show that takes you on a conversational journey throughout the ins and outs and the ups and downs of the Austin area real estate investing industry to help you reach your goals of financial freedom through real estate investing. I'm Antonio Holman, author, investor, and founder of United States Real Estate Investor, a real estate investing focused media company. And my mission is to help you learn and achieve financial freedom through media, networking, and knowledge. Today, we're talking to HGTV star, best-selling author, real estate, and private money coach, Amy Majuri. From determined to naive to now a content real estate investor, coach, and author. Stick around with me to see why Amy Majuri is a real estate investing success. If you're listening to this, there's a good chance you work within the real estate investing industry. There's another good chance that you would like to increase the sales of your products or services. Well, you're in the right place. United States Real Estate Investor is a platform you need to place your brand directly in front of your target audience. With our focused, growing audience of real estate investing beginners, enthusiasts, and seasoned professionals, you can continually reach our captivated viewers and listeners with ease. To learn more or to get started today, just visit unitedstatesrealestateinvestor.com slash advertising. That's unitedstatesrealestateinvestor.com slash advertising. Get ready to increase your brand awareness and your bottom line. Attract clients with content. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, Real Estate Investing Success Austin. Uh, we're here with Amy Majuri. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. That was perfect. Um, and uh, she is quite the real estate investing dynamo. Uh, I am coming to realize, which makes me honored to have her on the show and uh, give you guys some some nuggets of uh, financial freedom and financial literacy. Uh, so let me let me peer down at my notes a little bit here. So I have some some notes, some pretty impressive notes. Okay, let's start from the the biggest obvious thing in this industry. Okay, HGTV star. Okay, that's that's pretty impressive, and it's it's good to be so exposed to such a large audience who really needs it because this this industry is so powerful, and a lot of people still don't realize it. Uh, Amazon best selling author, uh, real estate investing coach, private money coach, and uh, yeah, you're everywhere. You're everywhere. So and this goes on and on. No, I'm right, kidding. right. So uh, are you ready to talk real estate investing success with me today? Absolutely. It's what I do. It's what I eat, drink, sleep and breathe. So I got <laughs> you. Let's talk about it. All right. Awesome. OK, so uh, before we get started in business stuff, aside from all the business and the uh, fun promotional things that you're up to, tell us a little bit about your personal life. Yeah, I mean, my background's pretty traditional. You know, I um, I was born and raised in a really small town, tight family, a Middle Eastern background, very um, liberal upbringings. My parents were not like strict when you think about traditional upbringings from that part of the world. But um, yeah, you know, born to go to school and get good grades and then go to college and um, then get a corporate job for the rest of your life, collecting that secure and stable paycheck. And so that's what I did. And then finally, 14 years later, finally, um, I decided, you know, 
working for Dell computers was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so I shifted gears and um, I didn't know what I was doing in real estate. So I invested in help and I invested in coach and the rest is really history. And I've been doing it for 10 years ever since. You know, that's actually one of the most powerful things that a lot of people tend to avoid is investing in a coach. And a lot of people say, well, coaches are expensive. I can't afford it. But I mean, as we know, it's better to think, uh, how can I afford it <laughs> to make it yeah, happen? No, I agree. I mean, I, you know, and this is as a coach now or whatever educator, um, it's something that is very normal, but it's something that I still, I'm going to use the word battle with when it comes to trying to change other people's mindsets. You know, I didn't have $25,000, you know, 10 years ago to put into a coaching program, but this is where we just need to make a decision and do it. I knew I wanted to invest in real estate. I knew I was going to be successful um, because I knew my personality. Like I knew I could commit to a plan. Um, and I really believe in the fast track to success. So I put on a credit card, you know, it's like, um, there's a girl I talked to, I was speaking in LA not too long ago and um, it was less than a month ago. She has more than enough capital to invest into a coaching program. She's a hustler. She's a hard worker. She will be successful. She's still researching YouTube channels, trying to figure out how to do it online. I'm like, just freaking don't even give me your money. Go hire a coach. You could have been doing your first deal by now. Like it just makes no sense to me. Yeah. It's all about mindset. And that's, I mean, if your mind's not right, you can't do pretty much anything in life, especially when it comes to being successful in business and stuff like that. So yeah, I agree with you. One thing I uh, noticed and learned about you is uh, you originally started your REI uh, career in Chicago. So how did you make the transition from Chicago to Austin? <laughs> it's so funny. I always joke, although it's not really a joke. I like to work as little as possible. So when I, I started my business in Chicago because that's where I was living at the time. Um, and I started flipping and wholesaling in my backyard. Well, it was very hard for me to believe this at the time. But what my coach told me is, hey, like once you figure it out, once you have systems in place, once you know what you're doing, you can do deals all over the country. And I was like, oh, my God, you're so crazy. No way. 18 months later, I left Chicago, moved to San Diego, and I was still doing deals in Chicago, Florida, Ohio, Texas. It's, you know, it's just education. With education comes confidence. So um, I ended up in Austin really because of lifestyle. I just like it here. Um, we left my family and I, my daughters too. My husband and I met at a real estate event, but um, we went from Chicago to San Diego, back to Chicago, now Austin, just because we like it here. We have friends here. So I haven't even been doing deals here the last two years. I'm, I'm starting to right now, but like I'm doing deals right now in, you know, Gulfport, Florida. And okay. I just put a house under contract and I've never even seen it. But you don't have to once you know what you're doing. Yeah. The, the, some of the joys of uh, real estate investing and a lot of people are going virtual. I mean, a lot of times, especially now, people are forced to go virtual because of the whole pandemic thing. So, yeah. Right. And yeah, it's forcing you to learn a different aspect. So, um, what's the one word or phrase that really got you interested into real estate investing and why? Um, I'll, I'll go with a phrase, um, which was, or a sentence maybe it was really just, I wanted more experiences in life and stick into my traditional nine to five wasn't going to allow me financially to experience all the things I wanted to do in life. And I knew that real estate could have been a game changer. Um, and it, it was a great vehicle to, you know, financial freedom. And so that's why I invested so much into it personally and professionally in the beginning. Um, you know, I just wanted to experience more in life. That's it. Yeah. Financial freedom related. Yeah. So uh, what's your favorite aspect of real estate investing? You know, I think it's like, Every day is just different. You know, I often joke about the movie Office Space. If you guys haven't seen it, watch it, right? The whole cubicle life. Um, in real estate, you never know every day. You never know who you're going to talk to, what properties are going to come up, where you're going to be investing, um, where you're going to be, you know, raising your next chunk of capital. Um, you, I, you know, I all I wear now are gym clothes. You know, I and yeah, I'm proud of that. Unless I'm on a stage speaking. I don't have to get all dressed up and go into an office. Like I can be casual and pick and choose the people I want to work with. Yeah. 
So uh, everything you're doing looks really good. It looks good. Your resume looks incredible, if you ask me my personal opinion. Um, but I'm sure that this, this journey hasn't been perfect and beautiful all the time. Uh, so what, what and when was that time on your journey when things just felt your most unsuccessful? Oh, my heart's already racing. Yeah, you guys, it happens. Look, I made a bunch of money, lost a bunch of money, had a bunch of tremendous immediate success. And uh, it was 2017. I will never forget it. Every day of 2017 sucked. It kicked my ass. Pardon my language. I don't ever talk yeah. like that. <laughs> um, oh, it was so hard. I was like crying every other day. And, you know, it's like, and it wasn't even because I got greedy. It was the perfect storm happening in downtown Chicago with all these high end flips that I had under contract. They were not selling. Um, the buyer pool had just dropped a shady contractor took off on me. And the net of that is I lost $1.4 million. And, you know, people will say, Oh, well that just came out of your company. No, this was out of pocket. I liquidated wow. all of my assets. I drained my retirement account. I put my private money lenders on payment plans and, um, you know, some of them did not get 100% of their principal back close to it, close to it. But, um, you know, and did I have to do that? No, but it was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, legally, when you do this business the right way, everyone's making an investment, right? You don't have to pay anyone back if a deal goes south. But, you know, it still bothers me that some people didn't get back, you know, the remaining 10% of their principal. But, I had to draw, draw the line somewhere, you know? And so that was really hard. And on top of all that, my boyfriend at the time, now husband decided to propose. And so I had to pretend to be excited about planning a wedding. And that was like yeah. the last thing I cared about. Wow. So it was really hard, you know, but I always say, um, you know, it's a tough times that define us and absolutely perseverance will prevail. And it's how you handle those tough times. Um, that will determine, you know, what you do next. And I never exited the game. I just changed my strategy, you know, and um, some people think it's crazy and they can't believe that I'm a coach teaching people how to raise money when I lost all that money. Why? One has nothing to do with the other. Just because exactly. I lost money, it doesn't mean I can't show you how to raise capital, mm -hmm. you know? So, but that was my long winded response and 2017 was the worst year of my life. Yeah, it's good. It's interesting how a lot of people think that successful people are just having win after win after win. There's there are a lot more losses than there are ever wins. And people yeah. just don't they don't see that or realize it for some reason. Man. Yeah. So uh, you got a lot of things going on. Uh, so I don't know how difficult this may be for you to pinpoint. But uh, what's the biggest current goal you have for yourself right now? <laughs> That's so funny. I'm not actually going to tell you. <laughs> um, it's such a, it was to some people to be like, what, but we have, uh, -huh. not the cliff notes version is, and then I'll give you a real response. Okay. I'm speaking at this event, uh, Cody Sperber's event in Vegas in April and all the speakers are on a side chat trying to like beat out the next speaker, all these type A personalities on who can sell the most tickets. So, so that's what I wanted to be. Like, I want to be Cody and I want to be pace and I want to beat all these guys on ticket sales. Yeah. But um, you know what? My my next goal really does align with um those group of individuals. It's like, you know, I have goals too and people I want to connect with and collaborate with. And um this opportunity that I have to speak on a stage with Robert Kiyosaki and Cody Sperber and all these legends out there is amazing. And I am um, I'm hustling every day trying to see how I can help these guys, right? So that they help me and that they help me um, be a bigger and better investor and coach. Um, so that's actually my goal for all of Q1 and Q2 is just collaborating um, with those who perform at a higher level than me to see how I can make, you know, my community better. Yeah. I saw the marketing material. Very impressive. That Congratulations. That was pretty cool. That's pretty Thank cool. Thank you. It is. And I'm going to be like, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. And it is a big deal. And I know what yeah. it means to step on that stage. And I look forward to it. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to talk to uh, Cody or Pace yet, but I'm, I'm coming for you if you guys are watching. <laughs> All right, so uh, what's your uh, favorite technology you tend to use in uh, real estate investing? Technology and real estate investing. Oh, my God. You know, I worked for a computer company for 14 years, and my technological skills and 
um, ambitions suck. So I'm very basic. Everything I do is on Excel spreadsheets, my CRM, which is Active Campaign, and Google Drive. Yeah. So, you know, of course I have systems and steps and deal analyzers and stuff, but um, other than this nice old laptop and the cloud, that's that's how I do all my business. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. Everything's in the cloud now. And it's, yeah. I was terrified when I first started, but now, man, it's incredible. It's great. I got, I got all my files and everything I need, no matter where I am. So I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's, what's your portfolio look like these days? Are you holding anything? Um, I am, you know, um, that's also a great and interesting question because I just decided, um, so I, I started out flipping and wholesaling and buying rental properties. Like a lot of us are taught to do. And, um, two years ago when my daughter was born, I started my coaching program, um, and because of really, I'm an older mom and I want to be a soccer mom and that is my number one priority. And I, yeah, I want to work as little as possible, but still stay connected to this community. Right. Yeah. So, um, two years ago, a year and a half ago, I stopped flipping, but I still invested into like commercial syndications or I'd consult on other projects or I, I still wholesale all over. But actually just a month ago, I decided to start flipping again, primarily the whole burst strategy. And so that's what I'm doing now. I just picked up a single family home um, and I'm going to turn them into vacation rentals in Florida. And, um, and I'm actually connecting with a commercial broker here in Austin. I'm going to start doing um, condo new builds in Austin, Texas, um, and potentially uh, like 10 unit apartment buildings for buying holds. Have, so, you, have, have you done new builds before previously at all? Yeah. I mean, tech. So in Chicago, a lot of what I did, they were technically still considered rehabs because mm -hmm. I had like a nail in the ground, but it was, um, it was pretty much a new build. So yeah, I've done a lot of high end new builds in downtown Chicago, renovations, deconversions, um, condo conversions, yeah, I've done a little bit of everything. So my portfolio now is I still focus more on the residential side. My husband, we do not work together. He focuses more on the commercial side. We act as each other's sounding boards. I coach, he speaks. Um, so it's it's cool. We do a little bit of everything. You ever think about reaching over to the uh, commercial side at all? Um, that's another interesting question. I was just approached um, two days ago by one of my students. She is going to be very, very good based on LA and one of her capital partners. And they said, Hey, basically, do you want to start a fund together? Do you want to start syndicating deals? And I don't, I don't care. Like that's a lot of work and yeah. no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Can yeah. I sure they're making enticing offers? So I'm considering it, but um, you know, it's kind of like, that's why I teach what I teach on private money is because when you know how to raise capital and you have access to money, it's, it's endless opportunities. You can do whatever you want in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so the, set. yeah, there's, there's one uh, question I want to touch on because you didn't mention, you said your husband's in commercial. So I'm curious, did, did he mention that he took a big hit somehow since the pandemic started? Because I mean, with the social, social distancing and all of that stuff, did commercial have a big impact with that? No. Um, and this is something he talks about very openly. He says, guys, when COVID hit, so he he used to, um, he's a public speaker more so than I am. This is what he does like every weekend. And But when COVID hit and the event stopped, um, my husband, Sean, stopped speaking. And for a year and a half, I mean, he still hasn't had a, like a J-O-B. It's been almost two years. And, you know, financially, you know, he's fine. He's fine. We're fine because of the investments and the decisions he made back in the day. Right. And, um, nothing is guaranteed in real estate, but in the commercial investments he made, um, fortunately there was only one project that, you know, didn't make its quarterly distributions. Um, but that was it. And he made really good returns on his projects. So, um, you know, I always talk about, you know, we make our money when we buy and we realize our profits when we sell. And so it's very important to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it and having systems in place to make those decisions, to make those decisions based on 
data um, and to not wing it. It's not a guessing game. People are scared to invest in real estate now because of, you know, the war. Why? There's always demand for houses in the real estate market. So how are you analyzing your deals and what's your strategy? Right, right. So, uh, Amy, how can uh, people connect with you and tell us about any events or any things you got coming up? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, it's just me, you guys. I don't outsource anything anymore. Um, so get a hold of me on Instagram. Um, send me messages. I will respond. Um, I'm always sharing content on there on ways that you can grow and scale your real estate business. Um and events. I'm doing a workshop, a private money workshop in LA this week. And if anyone's out in LA, feel free to join me, Marina Del Rey on Sunday. Um, otherwise, all my events are announced in my Instagram bio. So yeah, just connect with me there. I'd love to chat with you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So uh, since getting into the real estate investing industry, what are you most grateful for? Uh, without a doubt, I don't even have to think about that. It's my coaches. Um, you know, it's my coaches. Without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. And um, I attribute, yeah, sure, I'm the one who, you know, took the initiative to follow the system and do what I need to do. But without their guidance, who knows how long it would have taken me, you know, to do some of these things. And if other opportunities would have even come to fruition had it not been for them. So that's why... That's the part of the reason why I am a coach because I'm a product of the coaching system. It works and it's, it's still a daily struggle with me um, because I can't understand why everybody's not investing in coaching. I, I just, I don't understand it. Um, and people are going to say, I can't afford it. Um, yeah, you can figure it out, you know, cut down on your weekly lunches, um, um, put it on a credit card um, if you're disciplined enough to hustle and get out there and do it. And there's no reason why you guys can't grow and scale your real estate businesses as well. Yeah. So uh, one one quick side note: after you hired your first coach, what was that? What was that amount of time when you were like, "Wow, that was great! I'm very happy I hired that coach." So the the day I made that decision, because sure, I was a little, you know, nervous about, oh my God, 25 G's on, you know, multiple credit cards. Um, but, oh man, I'll never forget it. The, may, the day I made that decision, it was like this huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Really? Um, and I was so excited. And, and six months later was the next moment that I was like, dang, this is awesome. I'm making money. The business is growing. Um, so day one and month, month six really were the big aha moments for me. Yeah, yeah. All right, before I hit you with the last question, just want to tell you thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll do some great other things together. Somehow we'll connect again, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, so uh, finally, what is your definition of real estate investing success? I got all these tough questions. My <laughs> definition of real estate investing success. Um, oh, shoot. And, you know, everyone's goals are different. So um, it's having goals and, you know, crushing them, knocking them out of the park. It's Is it monetary? Yeah, sure. Financial goals are a piece of it, but it's also who you choose to surround yourself with. What's the power team that you that you're building? Are you sharing that success and highlighting your team? It's because of our teams that we are successful, you know? Um, so it's really just, I think at the end of the day, being able to do the things you want to do. So creating and building your lifestyle by design is my definition of real estate success. Successors, I hope you've enjoyed my quick conversation today and I hope you've gained just a little more insight into achieving your financial freedom and reaching your goals. For more real estate investing content like this and a lot more, please visit UnitedStatesRealEstateInvestor.com. That's UnitedStatesRealEstateInvestor.com. Thanks for listening. And as always, stay grateful, stay successful, and be free. Music by Stream Beats. Mastering. Your audio more listenable.